Well, when the first movie came around, I just heard about it as the title. I mean, Kung Fu Panda. And that's all I heard. And I said, I want that. So I, that was the first time I actually requested. Usually I get assigned in my career. And that was the first time I said, please. And so I was one of the first people on the movie, the first one. And I was a head of story. And I also uh, directed the opening 2D sequence on the first movie and um, sort of oversaw some of the fight sequences. And that was really fun. And since that was through four and a half years of the first Panda, when the opportunity came up to do the directing for the second one, I said, sure, that'd be cool. Because I just wanted to keep going with it. What's new? Well, we actually wanted to start off from the original and not lose anything good about it but also keep building on what we learned off the first one. In the first panda, Poe got to be the dragon warrior, and he got out of the noodle shop, and, you know, he, he developed a certain level of happiness in his life. And the second one, because we got to know him in the first one, we get to go deeper into his character and the rest of the five. We get to go to a larger scale adventure, and uh, Poe gets to explore the limits of his ability and find out more about himself. We wanted to go somewhere totally much more threatening in a way, where a villain that's more intellectual, smarter, devious, and having some, some skill, some threat that goes against everything that Poe has learned from the first film, which is becoming a kung fu master. He's going to have a means of trumping that. Um, so the, the villain himself, Lord Shen, is, is at first a very sort of unimposing looking guy. He's a white peacock after all. It's not that much of a threat, but he is far faster. He's got weapons all over the place and he's just really, really sinister and scary in his own way. A thing that's very interesting about Jack is he's got so much sensitivity to him. He's got so much beautiful, just emotive acting going on in his voice. And when we get there in the studio, he often ad-libs a lot of stuff. And we give him the lines, he takes it, and he knows what it's supposed to be about, but he will add stuff on his own that gives a lot of that, that sort of poism. Early on in the process, when we're thinking of Shen being who he is and his role in the film, we thought we need to have a voice that has a level of threat that, that's different from his appearance because you need that balance. And Gary Oldman just, he has such threat. He could just ooze danger just reading just the simplest thing. And we needed somebody who could do that for him. And, and Gary Oldman brings it every time. But being in China was amazing because you get a certain level of um, tactile knowledge of a place that you will never get off the internet or off a book or any sort of film that you watch as research material. And um, being there and actually feeling what the, the air feels like and the way the, the light hits certain building sides and tiles and tiny details, it was just, just again, that level of just detail that just, just pushes the movie forward.